obtaining Cohen's D with SPSS. SPSS version 27 and later calculates Cohen's D for t tests on one or two means. Let us see how this works for a one sample t test on average candy weight. In menu Analyze, open Compare means and select one sample t test. Select candy weight as the test variable. And let us test the null hypothesis that average candy weight is 2.8 grams in the population. Enter 2.8 as the test value. If the estimate effect sizes box is checked, SPSS will calculate Cohen's D. Let us paste and run the command and inspect the output. In addition to the usual output for a t-test, there is a table with effect sizes. The point estimate for Cohen's D is 0.21, so we have a weak effect according to the rules of thumb. The table also provides us with the 95% confidence interval, which suggests that Cohen's D is between minus 0.07 and plus 0.49 in the population. Unfortunately, SPSS versions 26 and older do not have the option to report effect sizes such as Cohen's D. It is, however, relatively easy to calculate Cohen's D by hand from SPSS output. Let us have a look at some t-tests. First of all, a one-sample t-test. We test the null hypothesis that average population candy weight is 2.8 grams. In our sample, we find an average of 2.836 grams. Our unstandardized effect size is the average that we find in our sample, 2.836, minus what we hypothesized for the population, 2.8, which is a difference of 0 0.036 grams. This is our unstandardized effect size. If we want to standardize the effect size, we must divide by the standard deviation. The standard deviation is reported in the table. It is 0.169, so we divide by 0.169 and we obtain a Cohen's D of 0.21, which equals the value reported by SPSS version 27. Our second test is a paired samples t-test. Let us compare candy colophonus after exposure to sunlight to colophonus before exposure to sunlight. Colophonus has clearly gone down in our sample, from 7.3 to about 5.4. So there is a mean difference of about 1.9 in our sample. This difference is reported in the column mean in the paired samples test table. As before, unstandardized effect size is the difference between what we find in the sample and what we hypothesize for the population. The implicit null hypothesis in a paired samples t-test is that there is no average difference in the population. So unstandardized effect size is minus 1.880, let us use three decimal places, minus 0, which of course is minus 1.88. For short, the mean difference that we find in our sample is the unstandardized effect size. To standardize it, divide by the standard deviation of the difference, which can be found in the next column. This yields minus 1.88 divided by 1.033, which is minus 1.82. According to the rules of thumb, this is a strong effect, because it's close to 0.8 and to 0.5. Note that Cohen's D can be over 1. And also ignore a negative sign if you interpret the effect size. Our last t-test is an independent samples t-test. Now we are testing the null hypothesis that red and yellow candies have the same average weight in the population. In other words, that the difference in weight is zero. In our sample there is a slight weight difference between red and yellow candies. Red candies weigh on average 2.8 grams, whereas yellow candies weigh on average 2.75 grams. The mean difference in our sample is reported in the independent samples test table. 
the null hypothesis states that the difference is zero in the population subtracting the hypothesized value zero from the mean difference that we observe in the sample does not change the result so the mean difference in our sample actually is the unstandardized effect size to standardize the effect size we must divide by the standard deviation Unfortunately, the standard deviation that we need is not reported by SPSS. We could calculate it from the standard deviations reported for the two groups, but it is easier to use a shortcut. We take 2 times the t-value and divide by the square root of the degrees of freedom. In contrast to interpreting the test results, we do not pay attention to the f-test on equal population variances. We always use the top row of the test results table to calculate Cohen's d. We must take 2 times the t-value, which is 0.651 here. We divide by the degrees of freedom, which is 18 here, but we must first take the square root, which is around 4.2. The result is 0.31. This is Cohen's d for this particular independent samples t-test. The value is closer to 0.2 than to 0.5, so we conclude that the effect is weak or small. There is only a small difference in average weight between red and yellow candies. This concludes the micro-lecture on obtaining Cohen's d with SPSS.